The size of the president's proposed social spending bill could be significantly reduced after the president took a more prominent role in negotiations. The first major item that appears to be out is tuition-free community college for everyone. It is a sacrifice in order to lower the price to get all Democrats on board. Guaranteed paid family leave could also be reduced from 12 weeks to possibly four. What is likely to be preserved is Medicare expansion, universal pre-K, and a one-year extension of the child tax credit. Now, this all comes as Democrats are facing a self-imposed deadline to pass social spending and the infrastructure bill by the end of the month. For more on all of this, I want to bring in Congresswoman Mikey Shirell. She represents New Jersey's 11th congressional district. Congresswoman Shrill, thank you for joining us. So let's start with the possible concessions. Free community college is potentially being cut. Guaranteed paid family leave is potentially being reduced. What is your reaction to cutting those items, both of which the president fought quite hard for? And what's your thought of the bill being scaled down from 3.5 trillion to just under two? Sure. Thanks so much for having me. I think we've known for some time that the the size of the bill was going to be coming down. So we've been looking at what is it that we can invest in to make the most amount of impact for Americans. And, and that's what we're looking at now. These are critical issues that are going to invest in our economy for the next several decades. So when we look at things like universal pre-K, making sure people have expanded access to that is so important uh, as we educate the future workforce, making sure we have child care in there. As you know, some of the worst hit people in this nation after COVID have been women. And women accounted for over half of our workforce pre-COVID, which was actually quite shocking to me and I'm sure to many of your listeners. So it's really important that we invest in child care and ensure that they have the means to re-enter the workforce. In fact, the recent jobs numbers were really dismaying when we saw 26,000 women losing jobs while over 200,000 men gained jobs. And that didn't even include the 300,000 women that had just quit looking for work. Right. And you have made this a, a big issue for you. You made the child care benefit nearly universal in the, in the Build Back uh, Better Act. Universal pre-K and a one-year extension of the child tax credit are likely to be preserved. Um, but what do you feel about these other parts of it that might not last? You know, tell us about why the issue of child care is so important to you. So uh, part of the reason it's so important to me is, quite frankly, I have four children of my own. And I can tell you firsthand how difficult child care is for working parents across the country. Before COVID in New Jersey, there were about two children for every one spot in child care centers. Now that, that situation that was already at a, a really bad point has become a crisis in this country. Now in New Jersey, there are about five children for every one spot. In a recent discussion with a child care center, the owner of that center was telling me she takes calls all day long from people desperately searching for a safe, affordable place to put their child as they try to get back to work. And Congresswoman, um, as you know, President Biden met with both Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema yesterday. They are both potentially holding up this bill because of the price tag. With the price tag looking as though it will be substantially cut, what would you say to your Democratic colleagues in the Senate as you try and pass this bill? Well, I think it's what I would say to all of my Democratic colleagues in the House and Senate alike. This is a critical piece of legislation that we have to get across the finish line. But I think that would probably be well known to every single member of my caucus. We know that we are investing in the future of America. We are making investments now in our crumbling infrastructure, in child care, in getting rid of the state and local tax deduction cap, investments that are going to move this country forward for decades to come. So the future really starts here, and that's what we're all trying desperately to get across the finish line, and we all believe so deeply in these programs. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has set a self-imposed deadline of October 31st for passing this legislation and the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Does it look to you like that is all on track right now? 
Well, I certainly hope so, because when I go home to New Jersey um, and I talk about this piece of legislation, I hear again and again and again, please get that passed. <laughs> get this legislation passed. We need to get shovels in the ground for the Gateway Tunnel Project. We need to make sure we're building back our economy and ensuring that everyone has a great future and our children have a great future. The investments in research and development alone are going to be so important to many of our corporations across North Jersey. So this this is a critical piece of legislation, and I, I do think the sooner we get this passed, the better for families across this country. Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much.